who am I? Uh, Brian Jones, writer, director, actor, um, caster, uh, music scores. I do it all, literally. Co-editor. What don't I do? Born in Springfield, Ohio. Uh, lived most of my life in Columbus, back and forth between the two. Now I reside in Huber Heights. I would say my passion for film came from a very young age. Um, the first memory I have actually is watching uh, X-Files with my grandmother. And uh, just, man, just being able to come up with a new episode um, and like 17 seasons, man, and just having them be so spacey and far out. And um, I just thought that was really dope. So this Army Knife, where can you see yourself in 2021? 2021 is about putting out less content, but more quality. Okay. Yeah, so um, in the beginning, I wanted to drop something, which we did with uh, Almost Blues. I wanted to drop something at the very beginning of the year, and then I wanted to take my time and do this, Director's Reel with um, an interview style. And then uh, the third thing that I want to drop is a full-length film, um, 30 to 60 minutes. And uh, that's actually going to be the first film that I wrote, which was Footsteps in the Dark. Psychological thriller. I was gonna say, you wanna share, you wanna share a little bit more? I don't wanna spill it too much, man. I don't man. Think, I don't know if this will make it in the real or not. Yeah, man, it's a psychological you've thriller. Said too much. And it's, it's, yeah, yeah. You've already said yeah. too much. Psychological <laughs> horror thriller. That's all. Right. <laughs> the key to success is taking the first step. Um, for anybody that wants to fucking do anything in life, the hardest part is taking the first step, and I'm a firm believer in. If you truly know what you want and you put it out there in the universe, the universe will provide. Yes, sir. I would say this. When you love what you're doing, it should never become stressful. Um, I love to create films and actually that was more of a challenge to me. Uh, my guy, Jess, that I used to shoot with, um, you know, after I brought the idea of doing one movie, which was Conundrum, which is my baby. Um, he told me to actually go with a shorter film since we weren't as experienced. And, um, you know, we did that first film, American Roulette. And next thing you know, he's, he's challenging me to do more. And so uh, I kind of seen it more as a game, man, as a challenge. And uh, overcoming them goals and working with people that's not as experienced was so wonderful, man. It was like, seeing my best friends. I put a lot of my family and friends in my movie, so seeing them, you know, become actors and actresses was like, that shit was so dope. It was motivation to keep going. So American Roulette, first and foremost, for everybody that's listening, American Roulette was actually shot twice. So the first time we shot at like this dance studio, fucking horrible, like people were walking around upstairs, like there's a whole studio session going on in the back and we scrapped it. And uh, I just think it's funny how when you really want something to happen, that it all comes together. Shout out to Slark, we was able to get his warehouse. Um, and we, you know, by then we had upgraded equipment and uh, I just did not practice my script. I was horrible. <laughs> Everybody else was good, but um, something about American Roulette that stood out to me, uh, first and foremost, if you listen to the beginning, I put my little brother on there. Um, he's also in the music and uh, he's talking and basically what he's doing is laying out the, the plot of the whole movie. So everybody go back and watch that and you can hear my little brother. What I try to do with American Roulette is I took um, actually, some facts I looked up online just about the man, you know, uh, a black a black man in America, 
and actually it dealt with suicide uh it deals with you know uh, quote unquote baby mama drama and um, i just brought it to life while making it you know something that's kind of fictitious the opening shot again that was um I think that was me trying to blow everybody's mind. You know, when you tell someone, hey, I made a movie, I'm a director, they think they're gonna see one of those YouTube films where it's like the the microphone's like coming down in the frame. And, but no, we shot that shit in 4K and I wanted to blow everybody's mind with drone footage. So uh, one of the my favorite things about American Roulette was having this uh, frozen in time effect that I put on there. Um, it was one of the things that I just had to have in the film. And basically what I was trying to do was capture like this terrifying moment. You have this guy that doesn't know what the fuck is going on. And then you have someone putting a gun to their head and blowing their fucking brains out. So it's like, how do you capture that? And, um, it was a great, great, great idea. It's just horrible acting by me. <laughs> The Cure is actually my most successful film. Um, the Cure is inspired by uh, the riots that was going on um, as a result of police brutality. And so, uh, again, what I wanted to do was capture something that's real and kind of give it this twist to make it like a psychological thriller. And so, um, basically what's going on is my guy, Jason, I went to high school with him, shout out to him. Um, I came up with this idea to kind of get inside the thoughts of him, of how he feels uh, about police brutality. So, Car Shot was Justin Tom's idea. Um, they basically came with this car mount, man, some shit I've never seen before. And um, it's basically it goes on the hood of your car and it shoots directly inside the car. And a uh, funny thing is, Jess was actually in the back seat of that shot. So, <laughs> so um, it's just, again, it's what I figured is watching movies and being able to actually study them, it's those shots that count. It's the little shots that you wouldn't even think of. And uh, I thought that turned out really, really dope. The Omen shot. So the Omen shot, I kind of took a piece from um, Jordan Peele. If you think of, uh, us, the guy that's kind of standing there with the 316. You remember that? It's kind of scarecrow pose looking dude. And uh, what I wanted to capture was like, it's a representation of change, basically. And so this shot, we have me, who's supposed to be change, holding a boom box because I love music. And then um, as each guy shows up, we show a flash of basically their internal dialogue to make them get to this point to where they want to come together for the cause. That was the idea behind the Omen shot. The Cure song. It's a funny story. Um, so I'm making this movie called The Cure. I'm coming up with all this shit, these ideas. And um, my guy that actually played Star Row and uh, In The Way, Lita, this guy has a whole album called The Cure. And he has a so like the song, the main song to the album is called The Cure. So um, I was able to listen to it and it basically matched. It fit so perfect to what I was trying to represent. And I was coming together and uh, yeah, he let me use it, man. Shout out to Lito. Tongue tie, man, that's basically, this was one of the part of the challenge to create like, I think I created seven films in two weeks and uh, Tongue Tie was one of those that I wanted to touch on. Uh, and we got a new actress, her name was Beth. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know her, but uh, her and Tori, I put them in my film. I just basically wanted to do a slasher film. So that was the, a quick outcome to that. The reporter shot is Jay Ray. He uh, played the main character in um, in my last film, the film before that, uh, The Cure. And basically, man, this guy, 
we shot this shit outside and that shit no lie it took like an hour but uh the main thing is that is not actually on the tv so that was an edit that was put in by my guy just and uh i just thought that was so amazing that he was able to shrink that down to size basically and uh what i thought on this was um just an emotionless shot it's kind of a telling shot and i wanted beth to kind of display emotion without doing so so like all the emotion is coming from her voice but as we can see from her face she doesn't give a shit about what's going on so it's actually pretty dope she did a great job on that shot and uh here's a funny tale lettuce that's just about lettuce. I told this guy I was uh, doing research on film, and you guys know the Aliens movie, right? Yeah. So when they're opening their mouth and shit, that's actually a guy sitting there like cracking open lettuce. Yeah. So the stabs in the neck uh, while Tori's laying there dead is actually lettuce sounds from YouTube. <laughs> uh, basically, how with each film I was able to touch on something different. And that was just major to me because, you know, I'm so glad that we didn't start out with my baby with Conundrum and we were able to get some, I guess, experience through each film. And uh, if you guys go back and watch, each film just gets better and better. So um, just that was his idea to do so. And I'm glad that he brought it up because if Conundrum was horrible as the first American roulette, then I probably would have given up. <laughs> This film is actually my balls dropping. <laughs> so this film, um, one thing about me is if someone teaches me to do something and then they cut the strings and tell me, you know, throw me in the ocean and tell me it's time to swim, that's going to happen. And I'm going to get fucking awesome with it. So basically um, just kind of made this thing to where he's like, I don't want to show up and do anything. I want you to have the shots picked out. I want you to do this, this, and that. And uh, I actually went out uh, two weeks prior to shooting and I picked every location in, in that uh, film. And actually I'm very proud of that because, um, so let's say the rock scene, the rock scene was all about uh, interaction. Um, I was studying, I think it was Scorsese and he talks about uh, in The Godfather, how when, you know, when the conversation is flowing through the room, how certain people become like the dominant figure in the conversation. And like the, they may come and have their whole side to themselves. The camera's more focused on this guy. And he looks larger actually in the film. And uh, that was my play on the rock scene, which is uh, I think, believe scene two in, in the way. Then uh, actually there's a park scene where we meet uh, the drug dealer, the weatherman. And uh, that one was inspired by mafia movies actually. Uh, when we see mafia movies, we see like, you know, it's not rugged. We see these guys in this fucking scenic place, reading a newspaper or something, they're fucking eating food. And like, it's beautiful outside, you know what I mean? And like, that was my motivation for that. I wanted it to be like, like stunning, but this guy's a piece of shit. Like it's, <laughs> it's like it's like two things in one, man. So that was awesome for me to see these shots that I picked come to life. Everybody wants to know what happened at the end of In the Way, and uh, I just won't give it to them, man. It's like that's a part of being, I think, a director is having people want to come back and see more. And uh, everybody wants my movies to be longer, but want nobody donate. That shit costs an arm and a leg, man. You want more movie, give me more money. <laughs> Almost Blues was an idea I had at the end of the year. Um, my goal was to actually put something out at the beginning of 2021, just to get the year started off great. You know, um, I heard this song by Chet Baker and uh, it's called Almost Blue. 
it's like a jazz it's really really dark kind of it's actually kind of depressing but <laughs> um if you listen to the song it's basically hand in hand with what's going on in the visual i think the hardest part of almost blues was not having any dialogue um i wanted to get my point across but i wanted to kind of do it without with some kind of test is something I haven't done before, right? So it was, um, I guess, in a way, that's one of my favorites because uh, for me, I said I was going to work on my acting skills and uh, the money shot where I looked all like super modelish, you know, and handsome. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all seen me. <laughs> <laughs> that I love that I love that though man um, I love the feel of it I love how um, this was around Christmas time so like the Christmas lights like it was so scenic in the background I, I hope everyone paid attention to that if I was to say anything else I would just say that um, people that you know they have these ideas and you know they feel like they want to do something and they can't do it for whatever reason is just take that first step man take that first step in doing something that you really want to do and um, that's always the hardest part but it always gets easier after that I think uh, I believe in the universe and shit if the universe gives you what you want and I think uh, once you take that major step that the universe will provide you with whatever you need. Brian Jones, y'all.